We're recording. You're good to start the meeting. All right. Welcome all. Thanks for being here. We're super excited for our first meeting of the General Plan uh, Community Advisory Committee. Um, we're really thankful that you all have applied or been appointed and um, we're excited to get to know you and kick off this meeting and the process in general. So tonight will be um, a little bit of a, a mix of presenters. And so we'll, as city staff, introduce ourselves. The consultants will go through some orientation um, and some different information, but we'll have plenty of time to um, kind of walk through your roles and, and how things will be moving forward. So um, with that, we also have um, translation available. Um, Beatrice, do you want to mention that for the folks who are Spanish speaking? Y para las personas que hablan español, hay eh, traducción disponible. Si nos pueden ayudar levantando la mano a través de el, su, su botón de, de um, Zoom, con eso nosotros podemos eh, ayudarles a, a que se, se conecten al canal de traducción. Thank you so much. And uh, my name is Amy Lyle, and I'm with the City of Santa Rosa staff, and I, I manage our long range planning team. And so I'm going to actually um, introduce Michelle to do a roll call for our CAC members, and then we'll move through the agenda after that. Michelle, are you all set? I am all set. I would just like to apologize in advance if I mispronounce anyone's name, and please feel <laughs> free to um, correct me. Um, if you could please just unmute yourself and say here as, after I read your name. Aaron Schreiber Steinthrop. Here. Ali Soto. Here. Andreas Vigil. Okay. Annette Arnold. Here. De La Shea Caramona Benson. Here. Erica Mikesh. I thought. Here. Sorry. Oh, perfect. Um, okay. Yvette Miner. Here. Jen Close. Here. Lee Pierce. Here. Lisa Jocelyn. Here. Melanie Allers. 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 Here. Allers. Michael Cook. Okay. Omar Lopez. Here. Um, Patricia Thompson. I'm here. Perfect. Um, Rituja Bomik. Here. Was that close? Oh, it was spot on. Perfect. Um, Ryan Tracy. Here. Stephanie Maneri. Here. Steven Spillman. Happy to be here. Hugh Helm. Here. Anna Stevens, I'm sorry, Anna, Anna, I can't, you just corrected Anna. me. I'm, you got Anna. it. Okay. Yep. Hi, here. Perfect. And then Anne Barber, Barber. Here. Perfect. Great. All so right. It looks like all members are present with the exception <clears throat> of Michael Cook and Andreas Vigil. Great, thank you so much. And just a note to the CAC members, we are waiting on a few more appointments from the city council. So we will have a few new members joining us, um, hopefully for our next meeting. So with that roll call, thank you so much, Michelle, for doing that. Um, we're gonna move on in the agenda and um, wanted to give you a warm welcome from the city staff. So with that, I'm gonna introduce Bill Rose, our, our interim, um, Deputy Director of Planning to say a few notes. Yes, thanks, Amy. Uh, well, I have the great pleasure to say welcome to everybody and to say thank you. Uh, 
what you're about to embark on is I think one of the most important things that, that you can do for the city of Santa Rosa. So I see some familiar faces and I see more that I don't know. And that really is wonderful because this process works when we have a, a group of diverse citizens who care and who want to be involved. And I, I see that we have that. So thank you very much. Um, some of the familiar faces will know that I've spent most of my time here in Santa Rosa closing in now on 15 years working in current planning, which is development projects. Somebody wants to build something, they come through and they work with me. And often, as you might imagine, because you see the news stories, those projects sometimes can create opposition or consternation and people will come out and there's often an uproar. And what I've often said is that's, that's great, that's the process, but what's even better is when people can be part of creation of the rules themselves. And this is exactly where the rules come from. Everything in the city comes from the general plan. All the zoning regulations have to point back and implement that. So, so this really is the, the heart of our regulatory framework. Um, and so, so this is really something important. And I just want to thank you all for, for being part of that. Um, I also want to say one other thing is that you have an outstanding team, both with the city staff, with the consultant team who you're going to get to, to meet uh, in more detail here shortly and throughout this process. We're very proud of the team we put together, but we also have great support across the city. All of the executive leadership throughout the city and the different departments are very um, much in favor of this process we're going through. And we also have political support. So, uh, and in these challenging times, we have a budget too. So that's always good to, to know. So I just wanna say thank you, welcome. Uh, as Amy mentioned, I'm the Interim Deputy Director of Planning. Any of you can reach out to me at any time. I'm pretty easy to find with a quick Google search and I'm happy to, to answer any questions that I can. Um, also with us tonight is Claire Hartman. Uh, she's our Assistant City Manager. Uh, you see my role as interim. Claire was me previously. She's now the Interim Assistant City Manager. So we've had a little bit of movement, but uh, suffice it to say, we're, we're all here to help you in any way possible. So <coughs> thank you. Uh, and with that, I am going to turn it over to Andy Gustafson, who is the Senior Planner in Advanced Planning. Thank you, Bill. And um, yeah, I want to echo a lot of what Bill said, uh, but I just a little bit of a spin. There's going to be so much to talk about in this time that we meet together as uh, with the Community Advisory Committee. I just want to more generally say how that in working with all the different departments and, and with the re representatives uh, from community groups and, and uh, our consultant team, we're going to have an, a, a wonderful opportunity to exchange ideas and, and work through issues. Um, tonight, when we meet today, tonight, we're really starting or convening a, a citywide public discussion on how we can shape the city. And in doing so, we're going to be able to be strategic, be, be um, equitable in how we meet the diverse needs and interests and goals of all of its residents and, and, neighbor, and neighborhoods. In the next couple of weeks, you're gonna see announcements coming out. There will be a survey released. Um, there's gonna be as much publicity, publicity as we can get out to help to inform people about the general plan update and also to foster and encourage engagement, not just with the CAC, but with uh, reviewing plans, asking questions, and, and meeting us in a number of public venues where we can get comments and feedback. Our goal is that we can activate a plan. We can create a plan that is really based on public engagement that ultimately reflects the hopes and aspirations of everybody in the city. In that regard, I'm very pleased with this CAC that was assembled. All of you who volunteered together really come together as a very diverse group that mirror the city's general population in terms of age, gender, ethnicity, interest, neighborhoods. So what we think we are very, very fortunate to have come together with this group. We feel this will really help um, to ensure that we're gonna hear from all different perspectives, um, opinions and roles in the city that will really help to make this general plan representative of everyone in the city. 
Um, I can promise you some of our conversations, most of them, all of them will be engaging. Some of them will be challenging. And I encourage you to approach the issues, to listen to your colleagues uh, with open heart and mind. And I think if you do so, uh, you're gonna learn a lot about your city. You're gonna create connections you didn't know exist. And, and out of this, enrich your time here as a resident. So with that, um, I'm very pleased to mark this moment with you and, and uh, look forward to working with all of you in the future. And please call me if you have questions and ideas as they come up. That's my role. Um, I didn't say at the onset, but I'm project manager. So my role is to make sure information <laughs> flowing back and forth amongst the team member the CDAC membership and other uh, uh, public uh, people who are interested in the project. So with that, I'll turn it over to Dan uh, Amsten, who project manager for our consultant team, who will bring us through the agenda. Sounds good. Well, thank you, Andy. And uh, I, it is a pleasure to meet everyone here finally face-to-face, -face, so to speak, in the Zoom world. Um, as Andy mentioned, you know, we are really excited about tonight. This is a great milestone, this project. Um, we've had discussions, our broader team with all of you, and uh, you're interested in be on the CAC. And so a lot of tonight is a little bit of presentation, a little bit of background, but we really want to have actually kind of a fun interactive exercise here for the bulk of the discussion to learn more about all of you, but also uh, for each of you to learn a little bit about all of you as well. So I'm Dan Amazon. I'm the overall project manager on the consultant side for the general plan update. I'm with a firm called MIG. We're based in Berkeley. Um, and we're joined with Placeworks and Gervais and Associates and several other firms as part of uh, this consultant team effort as well. Um, but I want to introduce the other key speaker here tonight, which is Michelle Gervais, uh, to do a quick introduction. She and I are going to help run through the discussion interactive part of tonight's uh, meeting. Michelle. Thank you, I'll be brief. I, it's so exciting to see and meet, see your faces. I got to speak with a number of you on the phone and Ana Padilla who's also on here uh, as well. So we're just delighted. I, I think we probably all share a real commitment to seeing democracy in action and at a time when the world is changing in bigger ways than we'd imagined, and we're all going to make sure it's for the good. So, um, you know, I, and I think understanding that in diversity and the strong diversity, the, the stronger the diversity, the tighter our weave, you know, and nobody will fall through the cracks. So I'm very excited to see you all and I'll be quiet. I will mention one thing. Uh, which is a mantra that I heard when I was kind of in one of your seats. I was a, a new citizen in Santa Rosa over 20 years ago, and I was on a committee after just living here four whole months. And, and, uh, and I heard the saying that people are down on what they aren't up on. And I thought that was really helpful to just really understand what we're all about, which is really communication, uh, which is the listening with the two ears and speaking with the one mouth. And so very excited to listen and hear uh, as you all move out and as you bring back in, it, this is really an opportune time and a great team. So, and I love the city of Santa Rosa staff and, and electeds and appointees have never been stronger and clearer and more forward thinking in my years of working with them. So I, I'm delighted. <laughs> Welcome. Um. I'm going to do a screen share here just to get our, our presentation uh, up and running. But do want to also mention, um, and we'll, we'll send this out. We don't need to, uh, this isn't a test of memorizing who's who. Um, but also want to mention and recognize uh, Beatrice Viero, who is a senior planner with the city. Um, she's a key part of our team, as well as Magali Tellez, who runs the community engagement division for the city. Uh, and Claire, the assistant city manager, um, who is also on the line tonight. And on our consultant team, we have uh, several other folks who are really core to this process that you'll be meeting as we go through these meetings. Uh, Ana Padilla is on the line as well. She's actually running the Spanish facilitation right now for any uh, participants who need that, as well as Charlie Knox with Placeworks. Charlie's the overall principal in charge of the consultant team and really kind of the overall organizer ever, ever. Um, and Andrea Howard of Placeworks, who is 
uh, my my co-project manager on a lot of things. This is a a big and complicated project, so we have a lot of resources to pull here. And then lastly, as we'll meet through the process, Carolyn Verhyen and Jamila Jordan at MIG, who are um, both community engagement specialists, uh, but Jamila also runs our firm-wide equity and inclusion studio as well, uh, and is a really key team member as we think about inclusive ways of engaging the community and really you know, casting this broad net of community engagement as we go through this. So I want to mention the other folks here as part of the process. Also, just a, a quick sort of Zoom orientation. We have a big committee, which is fantastic, but there's a lot of us here. Um, and <coughs> Michelle and I are energized and excited, which means we'll be going through presentation and presenting a lot of stuff. But if you have questions or comments, um, if you want to either write, raise your hand virtually uh, with this little icon at the bottom or add a chat, uh, we have members of staff who will be monitoring that and we'll let uh, Michelle and I know when there's a question or a pause point. Um, tonight, you know, is really a kickoff and talking about this process, talking about the importance of the CAC. Uh, as Amy mentioned, we are going to have interactive exercise to get to know each other, um, which I'm very excited about because I want to learn a lot about all of you. And then at the end, I'm going to wrap up with uh, sort of a second presentation on really just a big overview of the general plan and what are some of the key milestones as we go through this process or really this journey over the next several years to create uh, the next iteration of this milestone policy and regulatory document for the city. Uh, and as you notice on the bottom also, just chat is, is right next to the hand as well. So for a quick agenda review, um, we're going to talk just briefly about the Community Advisory Committee purpose and role. Um, we have members of the community here in the public as well, but also just a nice kind of reminder for all of us of the importance of this committee, but also just the role and process that we're going to be going through here during our uh, subsequent nine to 10 meetings over about a year and a half. We're going to go through this uh, CAC member introductions where we'll call on each one of you to, to provide a, some insights and some background in your interest and then the overview presentation. Um, for the members of the public who are attending tonight, just wanna to mention, we're also gonna have a uh, reserve some time at the end for public comments as well. So with that, I will pass it back to Michelle to talk a little bit about the CAC purpose, the role, really why all of you are, are here with us tonight and starting this journey. Well, um, again, to, um can't say enough about the importance of diversity. And so the point is that you all, uh, and we'll get to hear more from you about how we hoped that we reached every general corner of interest, of place, of background, and, and not even just so much of what is, but of what we can anticipate may be. And so um, when we have some introductions that you all get to do for yourself in a moment, uh, we'd like you to just spell out about yourself and, and what you would like us to know about you, uh, why you have this interest and, and willingness to commit time and what it is that would be a natural touch point for you so that we make sure that we are covering the bases and if we see a gap that it gets filled. So be thinking about that while I just go over some of that um, it's not housekeeping, but it is just a good reminder of hopefully what you heard in your interview. And that is number one thing is active participation. We really do uh, thank you because over the next months and years, uh, we'll be working together and, you know, uh, showing up is important, not just for the team, but because you're representing people and you're gonna learn things to take back out to people. So participation is key. If it doesn't work out for you, just let us know. <laughs> There's no wrong answer there. We just want to make sure that we fill that spot. And, um, and so uh, please do stay involved. Um, and you'll see, uh, I don't know if you could see this. I can't, I had to print it out, but I think active participation was on that list there. Um, you will be getting updates. You'll be getting materials to read so that we can all stay informed and on the same page. And they will be available to the public as well because transparency is key. Uh, this is uh, the whole point is to engage people. There are no secrets. Um, and so we want everybody to hear the same thing so it can inform ideas and we can uh, talk about them together. And in hearing the same thing, that means that we take time to listen to each other and that there is equal participation, inclusivity, 
uh, and a respectful engagement. I am a terrible interrupter. So uh, I, I'm gonna be interrupt, uh, protecting that from myself. We wanna make sure that we pass the baton, if you will, so everybody gets a chance to, to hear. And then the Brown Act is something that uh, you may be familiar with, Dan. I can't see you right now. Is that something you wanted me to touch on, or maybe that's I think the city's role. But the Brown Act, the bottom line is it's that it's a, a transparent, a fair, a well-noticed public process, and that there aren't sidebar meetings and so forth. Everything we do will be together. It will be noticed to the public, and they will be available to come participate. So just and in this and and we're being recorded. So know that, and um, and I know it will will all be our best. And that is, um, there's a little ahead. bit of stack there as well. Uh, if, folks, if folks can mute, just so we uh, everyone can hear clearly. This is just a graphic of the organizational framework. Um, all of you should have already received it. Uh, for members of the public, it's also available on the website as well. But as Michelle mentioned, you know, it's this structural document and we'll go through a few slides here as well. Uh, this, these are Brown Act meetings, or this is a Brown Act committee. We're not uh, set up or designed or anticipated to make any formal actions per se. This is more conversational as a committee. Uh, but because of the size, because of the structure, there is the Brown Act component, which really means we're noticing all the meetings and the materials and doing a quorum at the beginning uh, and space for public comment as well. So again, this inclusive process as um, this is a, a very public accessible and interactive discussion. So let's make sure we covered everything. Yes, you are serving as a liaison of sort to your uh, the constituent group of your, really of your choosing, we just want to make sure that we make sure that we're covering them all. So you can tell us more about who that uh, that group or groups are that you think you might be best, most naturally inclined to represent. Um, and again, your job will be to encourage participation throughout the process. We'll have ideas. You'll have ideas of how to engage people. We're open to your ideas on things that are more formal that we could include. Um, the project team include the consultant team that you just met in the city and um, providing ideas for consideration and, prepare, and preparing the general plan update. Again, that's, that's the, the rich stew of discussion. Uh, the decisions will be made by others, but we're here to bring ideas together, talk about them and provide feedback to the consultants and the final decision makers, which will be ultimately city council. Next. Again, getting the broader understanding of our needs. Um, the key topics and issues in a constructive manner, that's where we'll get really rich. <laughs> Sometimes those key topics and issues are the dicey ones, but uh, we're all here for the good. We know that. So uh, we'll, be, we'll, be, um, we'll be working through that together. I, I really enjoy that. So these courageous conversations are what we all need more of. And then in the process, we'll find that common ground. Next. So we talked about attendance, we talked about participation, the operating principles are um, listen and respect and share, uh, review meeting materials and documents in advance. Uh, we'll all do our homework. Uh, it won't be overly burdensome. It will be really interesting actually, but we want to be prepared. And then um, consider the technical information. Dan, you might want to touch on that, but there, how many chapters are there? You know, from air quality to zoology, <laughs> you know, there's every type of technical information that goes into a community is what will be uh, coming forth through the general plan. Yeah, it, there's going to be a lot of data, information, analysis is prepared throughout uh, this effort. And one of the key roles of CAC, you are all the experts in the community and liaisons to the community as well. And as we go through this process and start to understand information, but also develop and analyze alternatives, feedback, you know, are we hitting the right things? Is everything being addressed? Uh, are there other things we should be aware of? So we're not asking anyone to be technical experts or verify any data. It's more of, does this seem right? Does this feel right? Is this meeting uh, the needs of the topics that we're discussing? So I think we've covered, again, most of this, which is to listen and to engage and to be prepared and encourage others to share. Only one person speaking at a time. That's, that's gonna be really interesting to try out on Zoom. Can't wait till we're all in person, <laughs> but we'll do our best. 
um, concise and respectful. Cell phones must be turned off during the meeting. Well, just like at home uh, homeschooling, right? And then inform the city staff in advance if you're unable to attend. Again, we wanna make sure that if you have any information to share that we be sure and pass it on to you. So here's the fun part now. And I think if we're all sure that we have our, our mute on, then those who are speaking will come to the front with the yellow screen around them, right, as the speaker. So please make sure you're on mute. And then we're gonna go one by one, I don't know, a minute, two minutes, what, what it takes. We'd like to know, here are just three starter questions, but you can generally uh, tell us what you think you want us to know about you. So that's number one. What do you want us to know about you? And integrate it into that. Why were you interested in this? And so that we're making sure we cover all the bases, who slash mate, how would you go about contacting the natural touch points in the community, the constituent groups that you um, are most closely aligned with? And there's no wrong answer to this. We, again, we're just looking to always make sure that we're doing the best job of, of navigating the whole community. And, and so before, um, we jump in though real quick, I might be taking notes mm -hmm. on this sort of virtual board here, questions, comments as well. Um, so for everyone participating, uh, don't feel like you have to take notes or remember this, we're gonna, we're gonna encapsulate all of this. Um, but I think I'm actually gonna turn off the screen share here because I think we wanna see everyone um, and have everyone see each other. So just wanna mention, I'm gonna take some notes, but uh, let's keep going and let's do introductions here. And so I'm gonna ask you, Dan, I, I think we all see different screens. Do we all see the same order of screen? I don't know that we do. I wonder, Dan, if you can go through that wheel and start with, um, should we start with the A's? That I, sounds I, good. I there's will... a double A for Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. You're used Aaron, to that, you... I bet. <laughs> uh, this is Aaron. Yes, I'm very used to that. If we do first names, I am always first. But if we do last names, I'm usually towards the end. Um, so should I kick off with that introduction? Would you be so kind? Um, sure. So I think Thanks. what I'm going to say is what I want people to know about me. I think some touch points in relation to the general plan. And then was it also talking about how I would help distribute some of this information out into the community? Yeah. Or who might be your natural uh, affiliations? Okay, great. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, great to meet you all virtually. My name's Aaron uh, Schreiber Stainthorp, but. Um, yeah, I guess I've been in Santa Rosa about five years, and now I'm raising a family in Santa Rosa, so I feel very grounded here. I love this community. I think we live in such a beautiful place, and while we keep going through natural disasters, uh, I think it, it's still a, a great place to live and somewhere where I want to be invested in what the future looks like. I think some details about me. I'm originally from Chicago. Uh, right now, I work in sustainability for wineries, and I think I'm very interested in the sustainability for uh, the city of Santa Rosa. So just trying to figure out ways that we can plan that um, are really thinking about the future and trying to make smart decisions that actually benefit the city and the people that live here and make this a great community to live and work in. Um, so probably most of my touch points would relate around that, um, but I think it sounds like the general plan is comprehensive. So there's probably going to be a lot of interesting things we get to learn about. And I think in terms of how I would kind of connect with the community, I think my family and friends here are definitely people that I talk with. Um, I think through my work, which is Jackson Family Wines, I connect with a lot of people. And then I'm also pretty active in a number of different local environmental groups. Um, so those are all groups that I think I could help distribute information from and also get feedback from. Terrific. That's a perfect model for an introduction. Thank you. That was great. Why don't we go to Anna Stevens next? Hi, my name is Anna Stevens. I have lived in Santa Rosa for 44 years. That's my entire life. Uh, I've grown up on, I've lived basically in the Roseland, uh, St. Rose neighborhood for most of that, but also over in Roseland. And so I've had a pretty good um, mix of the downtown feel. Um, 
I'm actually not sure how I'm going to touch point with the community. I think I, I was asking earlier, like what what is recommended? Um, I think I would be really communicative with my personal neighborhood. Uh, we have a neighborhood group uh, of emails that we're always trading with and asking questions. Um, so I would probably do something like that. I'm very social. I have I would probably rely a little bit on social media. Um, talking to friends and family to see where they're at emotionally and what they think. Uh, acquaintances going out talking to people. I think that would just be the best way for me to get in touch with the public in our community. And that's it. That's great. And just so you know, we'll have ideas and we'll ask you for ideas on way to integrate. And yeah, it's not a one size fits all, but great. So, yeah. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Anna. Uh, and Barbara, how about uh, you go next? Hi, my name's Annie Barber and um, I'm a native of Santa Rosa um, and my parents were a native of Santa Rosa. So we've been here for a while. I've seen a lot of changes as time has gone by. Um, I was interested in this group. Um, Tom Schwenholm asked me about it. I am a board member of Coffee Strong and um, I have learned a lot about the city in the process of our rebuilding. And um, we have a great network, whether it's social media or just the neighborhood, quite frankly, um, to disperse information and discuss information with. And so I think I would handle it from that direction. And I think my, I think a lot of my interest would be in, um, in um, the homeless and um, climate control, that type of thing. Thank you so much, very much. Great, thank you. Um, how about Ali Soto next? Hi, sorry about that, the Zoom kicked me out. Um, the first question was uh, something that I wanted you guys to know about me, right? Yeah, okay, yes. well, um, I think I'd like to share that um, I've been here in Santa Rosa since 2001, so I've went since the age of five, so I practically know the whole town. Um, I've been very, um, how do I say, very excited and um, interested in what community action can do for people and for generations, and I think it's a nice thing um, to see people of all ages communicate and come together to talk about the growth of the town. So I like to interact with people. I really like to know where the town is headed, what direction if we are being progressive, if we're being, um, I don't know, a very welcoming um, town and just just to be moving on the right track, I guess, just being progressive and being positive and welcoming. I don't remember the Welcome second question, you. or was it just one question? No, that's that. No, that, and then uh, if there's anything else you'd like to know, you kind of covered it actually. But maybe um, about your natural touch points, if they're and you and I spoke at some length, so I, I remember. But for the others to know, but about where you move about and connect to. Oh yeah. Um, well, I've moved around through the whole town. I live practically everywhere, so I know like uh, most of the neighborhoods some of the low income uh, areas or just some of the schools and um, I don't know, places and people that may require more help or uh, communities, shelters, um, food banks or, or schools that just need maybe um, a little bit more funding or uh, stuff like that. But yeah, I think I've been able to meet a lot of people in this town, a lot of uh, different situations and backgrounds. So um, I think I'm very, I don't know, excited of just wanting to see how I could work for them and how I can communicate what their needs and wants are for the town. Terrific. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. uh, Annette Arnold. Hello, uh, I'm Annette Arnold and I've lived in Santa Rosa for a little over 30 years now. And recently I um, took a position with the South Park Building, Community Building Initiative, 
which is uh, through a nonprofit of St. Uh, St. Joseph's Hospital, now Providence. And um, what we're trying to do is engage local resident leaders in our neighborhood, which I represent South Park, and to engage them into making changes that better our community and working together so that we have a support system and that we can, once our, our program with St. Joseph is done, we are capable of taking care of ourselves and knowing how to deal with the processes to get changes done that we want in our neighborhood. On a personal level, I have never been involved in any kind of politics before. And I, for the last six months, have been inundated with it. And I really am finding it very interesting. And I love that I can have a say, however small, but a little bit of a say in what goes on. And I hope to contribute to the plan by um, a few specific areas that I'm interested in. One is representing my um, neighborhood, which is an underserved neighborhood. And another is to bring resources for younger people because I think there are very few things like that here in Sonoma County. And that's why I think a lot of kids are getting into trouble. And also to support the creative community because I've been involved with that community for like 20 years. And I just, I love the people. And I think it's a great thing that we offer to the people here in Sonoma County. And uh, the way I have of touch points are here with the community of South Park. I have extensive con uh, contacts here. And then I'm on a couple other boards like the community health board and um, uh, the police, the new one, the new police uh, ambassador program. So I can be meeting people through those programs as well. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just mention your point that what you're doing through the St. Joe's program about uh, working with developing a community voice and how to and really train citizenship, right? I mean, citizenry is a better way yep. to say. It. That's what this process is part of as well, or what we like to flow from this. So, um, so excellent point. Glad to be here. That was great. Uh, Delache. Hi, I'm Delache Carmona Benson. Um, she, her, Aya. What I like you guys to know is that. Um, I'm Afro-Latina, that's very important to me uh, for both sides, Afro and Latina. I'm involved in many, many things in this community. I am the SRJC president of the student body. I'm also the president, co-president of BSU. One of my favorite hats that I wear in this community is the newly found group that's called Black Excellence which is black founded and black operated with black voices. So that's what I would definitely be bringing to the table. But along with that, I'm also involved in nine other community boards and community councils besides this one. And at SRJC, I'm in 14 communities. As you guys were talking, I was writing them down. I was like, oh my goodness, um, I need a break. <laughs> so um, I would be bringing that. Um, I've been in Santa Rosa for 15 years. I live in Roseland. And um, so of course I get to drive through a neighborhood daily that I need to scream and bring my voice to. And um, I'm also a public speaker. I'll be using that platform as well as my social media and all my contacts on, on social media. Um, what I would like to bring to this committee and what I'd like to just really emphasize in this committee is what I call aid, advocacy, inclusion, diversity, and equity. And I think that Santa Rosa is really lacking that and we really need to bring that. But with my position at SRJC and in the community, I work with a lot of youth. So I'm gonna be bringing um, the youth perspective to a lot of the things like homelessness, like basic needs. And that's really, really where I want to hit on the basic needs and housing. And um, did I say that I too just came from Chicago? So I know that I know that Aaron said he's from Chicago. So you already know we got two Chicagoans in here. So it's about to go down. So that's good. Wow. Thank you. You are I'm glad you make time for this. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, next, Erica uh, Makesh. Hi, my name is Erica Makesh, a uh, civil engineer by trade. And so I have an engineering brain that likes to problem solve and that sort of thing. Um, but I figured out kind of later in life that I really enjoy talking to people. 
So any excuse I have to call somebody on the phone and learn something about them, like I'm all about that. Um, I've been doing a little bit more of that at work. And I've just really found that that's like what lights me up is being able to talk to people um, as opposed to just staring at a computer doing CAD drawings or engineering drawings. Um, I, before COVID, I biked my son across town. So we live in the junior college and he goes to Cesar Chavez, which is in Roseland across town almost every day. Um, so we're very familiar with like the homeless issues on the bike path. Um, so yeah, I definitely bring a biking perspective. Um, and then for work, I do a lot of resource conservation um, and we serve all of Sonoma County. But one of the things I've noticed is we really don't serve the city of Santa Rosa. And so I'm curious on how to integrate that into the general plan. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah, I would say as far as outreach, I love calling people on the phone. you'll get a lot of opportunity. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. That's great. And as we're noticing, there's a lot of backgrounds, perspectives on this group, which is fantastic. Um, how about Andres Verhill next? How's it going, everyone? Can you guys hear me okay? I'm using the phone. I've never done that before on Zoom. All right, great. great. So my name Andres. Um, I work at Red Rock Credit Union. I just started there about a year ago. And it's always been something that I've kept in back of my mind that I want to do something for the city, um, whether that's, you know, something like this or, you know, running for office or even working for the county itself. Um, I've always been, you know, um, interested in how the city works and things like that. Something my dad kind of um, pushed on me to do our duty, I guess, as uh, citizens. Um, he always taught me that it was important to vote because it was our voice and and if you could do more, always do more. So that's me, you know, this is me um, trying to do more. Um, as far as outreach goes, um, I'm, I'm a lot of word of mouth. Um, I talk to a lot of people every day. Um, it's kind of my thing. Um, I'm also very big on social media. And I want to say I'm big on social media, but I use it, you know, religiously. Um, that's kind of my newspaper, if you, if you, you know, want to think of it like that. Um, I am involved in a lot of groups as well, whether it's in um, my congregation over at the Resurrection uh, Church, um, my alumni associations, JC, Sonoma Stay, Roseland. Um, that's one thing I, sh I should have mentioned earlier. I'm from the Roseland District. I've been here all my life, went to all, you know, K through 12. Um, very proud to be here and very proud to uh, be able to do my part. So that's it for me. Thank you. So nice to meet you kind of face to face after talking. Yeah, glad to have you. I will mention, we are hoping to all meet face to face here during this project at some point. So we'll get there, uh, but the virtual is working pretty good. Uh, how about next, uh, Yvette Miner? Hello, I'm Yvette Miner. I'm originally from South Central Los Angeles. I've been in Sonoma County 29 years been in Santa Rosa for 24 years. Uh, some of the things that I do in the community have brought me all the way from Rona Park to Santa Rosa to Windsor, you name it, I probably had a little hand in it here and there in some point in my life. Um, I'm a part of Roseland CBI, the original CBI group here, community engagement, uh, building initiative here in Santa Rosa, we were the first and so through that process, learning about the community as a whole and bringing forward, you know, uh, steps to the community and learning how to motivate the community to do things to make a change in the community was one of the key things we did in Roseland. Uh, our goal was to help with youth um, crime. So many of the programs that we did in, in, in Roseland was in relation to that. In my spare time, you can find me teaching seventh and eighth graders community engagement, but due to COVID, I'm not doing that right now. So we pivot in our school district. Uh, I'm also a part of a host of entities, which I will not name, but I, my range is wide and I can range, it can be teachers, it can be parents, it can be the boards and commissions that I'm a part of. Um, I have a wide range and a, out, uh, a wide outreach. So that's what I'm bringing to the group. And I wanna see uh, the communication that the city has or any government in entity has with the public improve 
And so the only way to do that is to be a part of a process where you can say, hey, this is not gonna work for that community. That is not gonna work for those, in, those people in that area. You need to do it this way. And so if we can bring those voices on to this board and really share in the experience of what Ro Santa Rosa will look like in the future, will be a better place for all of us because then we all will feel like we have a voice. That is so key. I saw thumbs up. I saw everybody nodding. That's exactly right. Thank you so much. Let's go to Jen Close next. Thank you. It's so interesting to hear everybody's stories and um, I should have given this some thought, but I, so I, uh, Jen Close, and I'm the executive director of Generation Housing, a one-year-old housing advocacy organization here uh, in Sonoma County. Um, and I grew up here, uh, went to school here, and then, um, and during that time also spent significant periods of time in Chicago and Chicagoland uh, because of uh, divorced parents. And uh, so I know that, that, well, that area well. Um, I spent about 15 years away from Sonoma County when I lived in Los Angeles, mostly on the west side, and went to UCLA and then went to um, law school in Bloomington, Indiana, fantastic uh, progressive college town, uh, sort of an island in, in Indiana. Um, and uh, the, I was just thinking that there are a couple of things I think that have, have um, made me really uh, interested in how cities can engage people and give people opportunity and, and what gives um, cities a pulse. Um, and, and, uh, and, and also how cities can be fair or not. Um, and, and one thing was just growing up, uh, my parents were both local journalists, Press Democrat, and so we were just kind of brought up to, to care about what was going on and pay attention to what was going on locally. Um, and then I went to Brook Hill School, uh, at, at elementary school, and when I went there, it was like perfectly diverse. And so that was my view of the world. And then I went to Herbert Slater, where everyone looked like me. And I just looked around and said, hey, what happened? And that was super impactful. Um, so uh, there was that. And then the, the other, th other couple of things is I, when I moved to Los Angeles, I had a boyfriend who was a, worked for city of Los Angeles and he had a master's degree in city planning. And to help me get to know Los Angeles at night when there was no traffic, we would drive around the city. And cause you could really make a, you know, get around and, and get all over. And he would tell me the history of why is South Central de depressed? You know, what happened? The auto industry left. Like, why, why is this area like this? Why is this area thriving? Why is this area not? And that was really fascinating. And then in Bloomington, I lived five blocks from law school. And that's where I said, I'm never going to live anywhere again where I can't walk to work. Um, and that was, you know, the, boy, life on foot and on a bike is, is just so, such a better way to live than in a car. And that's just me personally. But in any case, I'm, I'm really passionate about being... Um, thoughtful and intentional about uh, pl community planning and making sure that it is equitable and that people are engaged and that there is a, a beating heart um, of, of every community. And I, and I think it, that there can be one. And, and, and Santa Rosa, um, I think this is a good time for folks to come together who uh, care about that for Santa Rosa. I'm excited to be here. You've done a lot for Santa Rosa for the good. So it's really great to have you. So Thank you so much, Jen. Uh, next, we'll go to Lee Pierce. Lee, your, your mic, uh, you got to turn on your, I think you're still muted. Unmute. Is that there you go. There you go. All good. All righty. Um, good evening, everybody. And uh, thank you staff for putting this on. It, this is one of the most important jobs that anybody can have in a city because we're kind of speaking from a diverse voice. Congratulations everybody on, uh, on signing up. Uh, we're speaking from a diverse voice, which is so utterly important in terms of how you want your self, your kids and your grandkids to live uh, in this community. Therefore, one of the uh, touch points for me and, and concerns that drove me to this process besides uh, Michelle Gervais twisting my arm behind. 
is um, I want to see more youth uh, involved in everything we do in terms of planning this city and what, like we need a grocery store downtown or another school over here or there, we need more affordable housing. Those are the kinds of things that we elders, we seniors did a good job on getting us to, uh, I'm now 73 years old, so, uh, and I grew up here in the North Bay, uh, St. Helena, so I know what it's like to be in a small town, but I also know what it's like having lived in the greater Bay Area for a little while during my adult life. I all know what it's, also know what it's like to have a bigger city uh, that uh, acts like a big city and has conveniences that young people enjoy and can come here and live and go to work and recreate the whole thing. So we, at some point in the process, have to keep our ears uh, attenuated and our brains to, we're not just designing a city for us who are here today. We're trying to look out for the future that's in our transportation, multimodal transportation, affordable housing. We talk about the homeless problem. Let's think ahead and look at uh, situations like that. Also, let's look in our business uh, sectors where I come from now as the president of the North Bay Black Chamber of Commerce, uh, which extends uh, throughout the whole North Bay. And I even serve on a Silicon Valley uh, uh, board with 10 uh, Black, Black Chamber presidents. We all meet monthly and try to align our uh, initiatives and things that we want to work on as a culture. So that's definitely a touch point. Uh, and we go all the way. As a matter of fact, to, uh, Friday, I'll be on a call with the U.S. Black Chamber of Commerce and Sacramento and the whole thing. So um, the point I want to make here is let's consider a diverse group as the city has apparently done uh, with this group. And I'm proud of that. Uh, but also let's make it transparent. Let's, let's, and the city has identified that I noticed in some of the materials I looked at. That's an important thing. Let's let people see uh, why we need to do certain things so that they can come along willingly and spread the message. And I'll take responsibility for going back to the chamber groups that I work with spreading the word and asking my board and other folks to do the same thing. Uh, but I'm also gonna be really seeking young voices and the chamber is gonna be bringing some young voices on to help us design a museum that will touch into some of the things that the city might benefit from in the end. So I don't wanna take up too much everybody's time, but that's, uh, that's uh, my primary stuff. Well, you're so great to be here and a terrific mentor for, for many. So thank you. My pleasure. Uh, let's go to Lisa Jocelyn next. Hi, it's a real pleasure to be here with all of you. Just hearing the breadth of um, experience and knowledge and excitement and energy that all of you have is uh, very exciting to me and I'm looking forward to this process. I've lived in Santa Rosa for 23 years. Um, I am getting involved. I'm wanting to do this because um, I'm at a stage in my life now where I'm transitioning into retirement. It's actually kind of being forced on me right now. I have been a non-denominational minister working as a wedding officiant for the last 33 years in Sonoma County. And the so one of the touch points that I have is the live event industry and looking forward to how to being able to work with them in this process. I also was a community development specialist for the city of Eugene back in the late 70s and early 80s. And I was responsible for working um, neighborhood improvement projects. And it included a lot of citizen participation. 
Now, I left that because I became ill. And I, so one of the things that I would have you know about me is that I have been um, ill now for um, well over 30 years, I guess 40 years or so. And one of the things, another touch point that I can bring is um, liaison, being a liaison with communities uh, like the MS Society and the American Cancer Association and uh, the Crohn's and Colitis, uh, so all these support groups. Also, I have um, working with the elderly community um, in Oakmont and other places like that. And also um, the church that I attend, I can um, be a touch point in engaging with them. So basically uh, to bring it full circle, I'm just at a place in my life where I have some time and this seems like a really wonderful way to give back to my community. And I'm very much looking forward to the process. Thank you. We're very lucky to have you, and I'm sure your skill will be really in helping us facilitate even these uh, meaningful conversations. So thank you. Thank you. Let's go to Melanie Allers next. Hey, everyone. I'm Melanie. I have been living in San Rosa for five years. I grew up in Windsor, uh, went up to Portland, Oregon for college and couldn't stay away from Sonoma County. So had to come back and I work in the wine industry now and I'm involved in the community in uh, softball through, you know, just community softball through the Parks and Rec program, as well as I play indoor soccer and do community theater. Uh, so those are my sort of touch points into the community. And I saw myself uh, sort of wanting to be a voice for young people like me, I got married uh, a couple of years ago and um, want Santa Rosa to be a place for young families and how can we make that an affordable place and what do we want that to look like for, um, for the youth. So that's, that's my sort of capsule of info and I'm excited to be here. You represent a lot of people who are here and who want to be here. So thank you. Thanks. Uh, next, let's go to Omar Lopez. Hello, everybody. My name is Omar. I, to start off, um, I want to say that I've been in Santa Rosa since 2013. Uh, my parents and I moved here then. Um, and since then, I've been slowly building some community relationships. Uh, as of right now, I am a senior at LC Allen High School. I am the student board member with uh, Santa Rosa City Schools, so I get to sit in on their board meetings and cast a preferential vote. And aside from that, I've been able to get more and more involved in our community, you know, politically and just community-wise. Um, and so that's one of the greatest things is just getting involved with the community and getting to know so many people in specifically in the area I live. I live right across from Roseland, uh, but I, I, I know uh, Roseland very well. And so that's one of my biggest points of contact is that neighborhood and also the high school communities being the student board member, I have extensive connections throughout them. And so that's what I, I would look forward to bringing to these meetings is just a young student perspective, looking someone who wants to stay in Santa Rosa, but the current situation makes it a little bit challenging for me. So hopefully working to change that, that's definitely one of my objectives. Well, you and Melanie and Andre and Allie and all of you, actually, you don't just represent your own. You represent parents with kids and they want their kids to get to stay. So you, you guys are really important to the discussion. Thank you so much. Uh, up next, Patricia Thompson. Hi, uh, my name's Trisha. Um, I grew up in Renner Park. But um, I've lived in Santa Rosa for the last five years. Um, we are, I went to college in Sacramento and then lived in Miami for a short time and was inspired by their community involvement. Um, and that when we moved back here, I wanted to try and get a little more involved in Santa Rosa. Um, I have a one-year-old and then I'm nine months pregnant right now. So I'm also a little winded. 
<laughs> talking. <laughs> um, Congratulations. But, uh, thank you. But I wanted to start getting involved so that I can make sure that this is a community that I'm excited to raise my daughters in. And um, I'm a board member of the Santa Rosa Mothers Club. Um, my family is here, my husband's family is um, all local. And we wanna make sure that it's somewhere that our daughters can stay and that my young sisters are still in high school and um, college and that this is a place they can afford to live in. Um, so I'm just excited to kind of get to know everybody and learn more about the different areas of the community that I can be of service. We can't wait to meet your second daughter too then. Yeah. So, yeah. You'll get an excuse <laughs> if you need to duck out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great. Uh, up next, Rituja Bomik. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Rituja. Um, like Omar, I'm also a senior in high school. And um, I've lived in Santa Rosa my whole life. Although um, I have moved around um, a lot of different neighborhoods, mainly in the Northwest and now um, I'm in Rincon Valley. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to get to know like different sides of the town. Um, so community engagement was actually not a really big part of my life until the Tubbs fires. Um, that is something, it's an event that is really important to me because it displaced my family um, and it's something that we're still kind of recuperating from, but at the same time, it is what introduced me to um, a lot of opportunities to engage with um, people in the community. I started off volunteering with the Red Cross and um, that um, exposed me to actually a lot of our senior communities. We worked in a lot of mobile home parks, um, doing like fire alarm installations. And um, one thing I realized that was missing from our emergency response was inclusion for seniors um, and connecting them to technology. So um, when I was a sophomore, I reached out to a bunch of different mobile home parks. Um, and since then I've had a job working with a lot of low income seniors and making sure they have Mixel as well as um, like addressing their other tech problems. Um, kind of like a all rounder technician. Um, and it's a job I really love um, it, it's a community where I have a lot of contacts in. Um, so I hope to bring that to the council. And another um, aspect that's really important to me would be cultural sensitivity. Um, I was raised in a Bengali household, um, but I lived in mainly Hispanic neighborhoods. So um, engagement with our uh, Spanish speaking community is also something that's super important to me. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to work with you all to bring neighbor equity to um, all of our neighborhoods in San Rosa. You're a gem, Aratuja, from having gotten to know you through the interviews and others, as you all are. And I just would say one thing that I think is interesting about Santa Rosa and Sonoma County, like too many places increasingly, there's been a lot of hardship. And, and um, you all have stories that you say so graciously. And, but I think out of this, we're, the compassion and the generosity of spirit and the focus on what matters is really coming more and more evident into the surface. So I, I'm really excited about the, all these crystals coming together. It's just gonna be wonderful. Thank you. Great, up next, uh, Ryan Tracy. Hello, I'm, uh, I'm Ryan Tracy. I um, actually didn't move to Santa Rosa until September 2019, so I'm a rather recent transplant. Um, but quickly, I, I appreciate a lot of those um, attributes you described, Michelle, locally, and just what a beautiful place. And I've immediately decided, you know, this is where I want to settle down. I have a three-year-old. This is where I want to raise him. This is where, yeah, I want to retire. I'm, I'm, I'm very confident. <laughs> so um, before this, I actually lived uh, 11 years in Bakersfield, um, which did give me some perspective, you know, of you know, a, a community that, that really prioritized growth over, over some other, um, you know, some other, un, you know, less, less tangible drivers. And I, it makes me appreciate some of the decisions that, that have been made locally and some of the trade-offs that need to be considered when, when putting together a general plan. I'm a, I'm an engineer. I love, um, I love maps. I'm, so it's kind of, I'm also a political junkie. So this is kind of a perfect nexus of, of those, those kind of interests. It is my, my first, foray into public service. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, as far as connections go, the, um, I'm 
most of the other time I lived in Santa Rosa has been during COVID. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, developing my social network, you know, might not have happened as quickly as I'd like. So I actually see this as a good catalyst for, for starting to try to develop those connections. Um, I do work for Sonoma Clean Power, um, who is you know, very heavily involved in the community and, and, and you know, we have a lot of close relationships with customers that I, that I plan on leveraging, but yeah. Welcome, just what we need. Thank you so much. We could meet more often if you're really dying to, but <laughs> some busy schedules, okay. Uh, up next, Steven Spillman. Hi, and honored to be part of this group, which is committed to enhancing Santa Rosa's future. It's really a, a great challenge. I grew up in a small Midwestern town. I first attended Purdue, then Kansas State University in architecture. After graduating, I designed hospitals, master planning communities, mixed use projects, as well as some retail, entertainment, recreational, and mixed income, multifamily projects. <clears throat> Later I earned an MBA in finance and investment and joined a Chicago real estate firm where I was responsible for developing and redeveloping urban infill and adaptive reuse projects in New York City, Boston, Cleveland, Chicago, Milwaukee, Dallas, and Houston. My wife and I wanted to live in Chicago, so we loaded up a U-Haul, moved to Orange County, and started looking for jobs, where I eventually continued developing similar projects. That was an eye-opener politically and otherwise. Uh, one of my focuses during the past 10 years was volunteering for Mission Viejo. That's an Orange County city of about 100,000 people. And there I, I served on the Planning and Transportation Commission for six years, chairing it twice while leading the commission's update of the general plan and all of its elements. Uh, I also chaired the Investment Advisory Commission and the Pension Funds Board of Trustees and the Water Conservation Committee. And all those were great. They were fun, challenging, as was my six years on the Design Review Committee and at times on the Traffic Committee. After being on the city's community services commission, which was parks and rec, health and welfare for juniors and citizens, seniors, excuse me, um, and the Orange County Registrar of Voters Committee as a two-term chair, I just believe in voting is important. Um, I resigned in order to make my family's dream come true. And that was joining like-minded like Santa Rosa community and continuing to give back. Um, education is a passion of mine. I believe education provides folks with more life's choices. I've been an instructor at UC Irvine, uh, a national land use workshop instructor, a project management trainer, and a watercolor instructor at a community college. And I like mountain hiking, gardening, cooking, I like board games, travel, and just generally exploring, learning, and and volunteering. So as the new kid on the block, I hope to bring a fresh perspective grounded in a variety of land use experiences and a passion to work with a wide variety of folks to help in any way I can to make Santa Rosa's future as bright as possible for all walks of life. So I, I must say this is really a great group of committed folks you know, we can accomplish great things for our community and I'm looking forward to working with everyone in this group. Thanks for having me. Wow, just wow, right? Well, the new kid part, I would just question, new kid to Santa Rosa, but a very deep bench of experience from you. So thank you. Um, and, and I'm still listening, my battery, it, it's plugged into a, an out of charger. So if I duck out, I'm still here. I'm just looking for a, a server away from my kids. So, okay, I'm here. Uh, up next, uh, Stephanie Manieri. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Stephanie Manieri. Um, it's really good to see a lot of familiar faces and some new faces here. Um, what I want you to know about me is that I am the daughter of immigrant parents. So my parents immigrated straight from their countries, um, their home countries to Santa Rosa. My dad is from Venezuela and my mom is from Mexico. 
Um, and so they, they met here in the 80s and then I was born in the 90s. So, um, and I've been here in Santa Rosa, um, specifically Southwest Santa Rosa and Roseland my whole life. Um, I went to Cook Middle School and LCLN High School. And then I went to college um, in San Rafael. I went to Dominican University. Um, I have an undergraduate degree in public health and a master's degree in health policy and law from UCSF. Um, and I've never moved away. Um, I, I've always lived here and commuted and have worked since I was 15. Um, and I also um, sit currently on the Santa Rosa City Schools Board of Education. Um, I, I have a really big passion for equity in our, a lot of our different institutions, but specifically in our education system, um, because I was one of the students who was told I would never go to college and that um, maybe I should go to go to the JC first as if that's a really bad option. Um, and so, so I just, there are a lot of things I wanna change about my community, um, but I love my community. I'm invested in my community. I bought my first house in Roseland um, last year. And so I'm very committed to, to staying here and not moving away because if I'm going to invest resources and time into something, it's gonna be where I grew up and where my parents um, have, have been trying to lay roots down in. So. Um, that's, that's a little bit about me. I work at an organization called Latino Service Providers. I'm the director of programs there and I run a youth community health worker program. Um, so I also have a really big interest in mentoring youth and, um, and providing opportunities for leadership for them and um, helping them realize that, um, you know, we, we can't be voices for any particular communities. We can uplift the voices of, of our neighbors and our community members, um, but we need to really be conscious about um, power dynamics in, in our local politics um, and, and in our, the way that we do community engagement and community outreach. So that's a little bit about me. Thank you. I love what you just explained about how to lift voices, not speak for others that's just beautiful and I have to say whatever I get down I'm going to think of you all this is you bring such hope for the world so thank you who's next all right so next is Hugh Helm Hugh I think you're on mute can you um, unmute your microphone, please? There we go. Can you hear me there now? There you go. Yes, perfect, uh, thanks. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Hugh Helm, and I uh, am a resident of Oakmont Village. Uh, I'm a retired attorney. I've lived in Sonoma County for the last uh, 35 years or so. Uh, the last 22 or three have been in the city of Santa Rosa. Um, I am uh, originally from Ohio, uh, but came out here because I love the, the weather and the country and the politics and the people and everything about it. And I've loved it ever since. Um, I have, uh, during my legal practice, I uh, served as a law professor at, at uh, Empire Law School for 15 years, um, volunteered for lots of uh, organizations and such, as well as practice law. And since my retirement, I've been primarily involved in volunteering my time for environmental organizations. Uh, I've been a docent and a land steward for uh, Blueberry Preserve, La Laguna Foundation, Sonoma Land Trust. So environmental issues are important to me. Uh, I'm a road cyclist, so, I'm, so bike trails and bike friendly roads are important to me. Uh, and so uh, I'm looking forward to working with everybody here and uh, hopefully we can uh, come up with something that will help manage the future of, of Santa Rosa so we'll all have a better future. Thank you. Thank you. You, you really landed in God's country then, didn't you, for out, year round cycling? <laughs> yeah. You're right. Thank, thank you. Well, great. Well, thanks, everyone. I think that is everyone, uh, at least on the list that I have. If we miss anyone, first, I apologize. But if you want to unmute and introduce yourself, I think we have all the CAC members. I think we're good. We're good. Okay. <laughs> I know this is a big group, um, but why everyone was doing introductions, I do want to show that uh, Ana Padilla has been helping me out here. And this is the composition of who we are as a group. Pretty amazing. Um, 
you know, as we all heard this last hour or so, there is such a diversity of backgrounds and perspectives and interests, um, which is really exciting and is uh, hugely valuable to this process, but also as we further engage with the community. And so again, thank you, uh, each of you for your time here. And um, Anna did that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of cool. All right, there we Very go. Cool. Um, Will you be sharing this, Dan? Is this something we'll get to see? Absolutely. Okay. So, is, so usually in the in the physical world, we're usually drawing on butcher paper and creating all these wall graphics. We do this here in the digital world as well. So uh, this is something that will be going out to the whole group and also uh, publicly available as well uh, at the end of the session. So with that, let me transition here a little bit to our, our next uh, part of the agenda. And we want to spend a little time of just talking in a little bit more detail about um, this project, Santa Rosa Forward. And as staff mentioned earlier, uh, Bill and Amy and Andy, as well as mentioned from a few CFC members, this is a, a, a really big project, but a tremendously important project. And general plans are this strange, weird, esoteric thing that every city and county has. Um, they're big documents, they're policy, they're regulatory documents. And most people, I'm a general plan practitioner, most of the time when I go to new communities, most people have no idea what a general plan is, and that's fine, but everyone knows how it affects them and impacts them. And the best way of thinking about it is all of our communities are planned to some level. Uh, where homes are located or should be located. Other buildings, stores, parks, schools, roads, all these features that comprise what we know as our city are, are planned at either a detailed level, you know, sometimes there's master plan communities or more of, you know, how do we rehabilitate or transition older neighborhoods or downtown through economic development or whatnot, but there's always intentional actions that go into that. And so in this graphic, just thinking about where schools are located relative to homes, relative to parks and open space. Um, obviously we're not starting from scratch in this project by any means. We have a, a, a very large, robust, uh, integrated community. So a lot of the discussions we'll be having is how to make things better, how to address core needs, uh, where are facilities or services needed on a neighborhood level. Um, so the, the most important part about planning, which is this process over the next few years, is thinking about the people. You know, a city is not just a collection of buildings. Uh, we all interact, we all need to move around. We need education, jobs, safety, places for entertainment. Uh, yes, we have a photo of a whole bunch of people hanging out in you know, the center of downtown. Uh, in COVID, things have changed and just the, the interactions of folks is really important. Um, mobility is gonna be a big topic as we go through this project and think about uh, how we move through the city, how that can be improved. So this general plan update process, very intentionally working with staff, we did not want to call this a general plan update. We wanted to create a name or title to this that better resonates the importance of this, but also is more tangible to the community. So we came with Santa Rosa Forward. Um, one of the ideas is, you know, bouncing forward from where we have been with fires, disturbances, homelessness, uh, economic impacts. But really, this process is a chance to revisit and rethink planning policies and programs. Um, cities do not update their general plan every year because this one is a tremendous effort, but also uh, general planning practice and also state requirements is, you know, every 15 or 20 years, it's good to take a really big refresh and look at these goals and policies. Um, but as everyone discussed today, you know, how to improve Santa Rosa for everyone? and how to really make this a process uh, that results in this outcome of positive change. So this is a, a, a complicated diagram and we have this available on the website and we'll send out to all of you, but this is really sort of distilling what this three-year process is going to be. Um, and the takeaway is there's a lot of stuff that takes place during a general plan update. It's 
it's actually like four or five different projects all sort of folded into one. Um, we've just finished up the consultant team and city staff going through a city profile and existing conditions report. Um, we're going to be sending that out to all the CAC members and uh, discussing it in more detail at our second CAC meeting. <clears throat> but once we get this good understanding of sort of the core existing conditions, uh, we're going to be moving into a visioning process with the community and with virtual workshops and other engagement events here, sort of March, April, May. Uh, ultimately going, as you can see here in row D to alternatives, and this is land use or physical alternatives, but also policy alternatives um, and different ways of thinking about economic growth and access to education moving to a preferred alternative and ultimately a draft plan. Um, because this is a planning document and regulatory document, we also need to conduct an environmental analysis uh, consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act. So looking at uh, potential environmental impacts of some of these land use or policy, policy decisions as well. But what's very key in this process is all of these items circled in red. These are uh, all the CAC meetings that we're going to have during this process and really all these key um, touch points as we go through this process. Uh, Dan, I have a question. I, yeah, I was going to say, Yvette's got her hand up. Thanks. <laughs> yes, Yvette. Uh, my question is in regards to the name change you, you said it's going to be Santa Rosa Ford. So when we see this in the future, let's say in five years, is that going to be the name of it? Or are they going to go back to um, Santa Rosa general plan updates? Or is that just for this time period? Great question. Um, so we, we branded this project for three years. Um, it, the document itself can easily be called Santa Rosa forward, you know, the next general plan. Um, that is something, you know, definitely to be considered as part of this. We do have a project website that's santarosaforward.com, um, which could in several years actually become the general plan in a digital format as well. Um, so we're not, we're not bound by the title general plan. Uh, it, it, it is that type of document, but the, the name can be very specific to the city. Okay, I'll keep pacing here, but more questions or, or comments, just let us know. And I'm set up now to where I can, I can see the, the prompts. <laughs> so I'll, I'll do a pause. Um, so very, very, very core to this process is our community involvement strategy. And this has been something we held workshops and some virtual meetings uh, that I know some of you attended, but with other folks throughout the community last summer to really think through the engagement and involvement strategy as part of this project. Um, one, we want to really identify or even remove barriers to participation. And this is an interesting challenge because we were starting this project right as COVID hit and stay at home hit as well. Um, so there's obviously digital barriers and digital divide within the community as all communities have. And so we're looking at multiple ways of getting information out, but also taking in ideas as well, both physical and digital throughout this process. We want to leverage a lot of the existing uh, local social media networks. They're already used. Uh, they have a lot of users, hugely important. Uh, we've set the bar intentionally very high on this project. And by we, I mean the city, but also the consultants, but also the CAC as well. Uh, we want to have the most inclusive and equitable participation of any general plan. Um, and I mean that genuinely. We, we have some pretty strong metrics that we are going to hit in this project on how we are engaging people and how successful. Um, and some of those metrics we may not hit. So as we go through this process, we want to talk with all of you. Are there different methods or opportunities to better improve uh, how, how well we're reaching the community? And of course, collaboration uh, as we go through this process and very engaging workshops and events and surveys to really build um, interests and ideas and partnerships on the strategies that, that folks are starting to pull us around. And also an, an interest in community planning um, and intentionally that's not city planning, community planning. How can we all work on this together 
uh, to get the outcomes that we want. We know Santa Rosa, Latino service providers, many other groups are already doing a fantastic job of this. So we wanna, again, really build on the great energy that already exists, some of the great methods, tools, techniques as we go through this process. Um, so our overall strategy, this is both a document, but also a process. We wanna be authentic and equitable on uh, how we deploy all these different engagement techniques, uh, inclusive and flexible as well interwoven with equity and who has access to what information, how can we prove equity throughout the community? As I mentioned, we like to use these words, high, high touch and high tech. Uh, we're not relying on just physical, we're not relying on just digital. It needs to be a combination of both to reach the whole community. And as much as we can reduce jargon, <laughs> so it's clear. I'm a planner by trade. I am addicted to acronyms, abbreviations, and jargon. Um, but all of you will help me and uh, no doubt uh, ask me to clarify if I do any of those things through this. But for the broader community, uh, really understanding at a, at a very clear level what this project involves. And that includes translation and how we're translating materials and different documents as well and reducing jargon to that process. Ultimately creating this framework for growth development and community design, but a, a very respectful process as well. So these are the sort of the guiding principles on this overall uh, pathway to engagement. I do want to note that at the beginning of this project, Kaiser Permanente provided the city with a, a wonderful Healthy Communities grant that is providing funding for both uh, engagement to underrepresented communities, but also the development of very robust healthy city policies and actions as part of this process. So they're a great uh, partner in this effort, really helping to, to bolster some of the engagement activities of the right part of the project. And Latino service providers is also a key partner with the city uh, as part of this. They, they also received a grant through Kaiser in addition to the city, uh, again, to really broaden this outreach, broaden youth engagement and really create um, this bigger focus on inclusion and healthy community activities throughout the project. So initially through some surveys that were done a couple years ago by the city, by also uh, what we have heard from some of these initial discussions and other information, the city has heard a lot of meetings as well. Some we're just calling key topics. Uh, this is just a starting point, but just thinking about what are the things we, we really wanna focus on, but think through as we go through this process. General plans could be sometimes overwhelming uh, because it is all encompassing. We can address almost any topic uh, really within the general plan. But one is thinking about housing and ways to increase housing for all. Well, what does that mean? That's it's affordability and access, but also different housing types and sizes um, for families versus young adults versus seniors, you know, making sure there is that range. Uh, if there's ways through policy to reduce uh, barriers to homeownership or uh, rentals. And also front and center in Santa Rosa and almost every community homelessness and housing people who are unhoused and strategies around that as well will be key. And these are pretty big baskets. Obviously there's a lot of things below them, but also thinking about uh, retail and shopping and dining and entertainment. Um, retail's changing and the formats of retail are changing. How we get goods is always changing, but also opportunities to create entertainment districts or a variety of activities, increasing outdoor dining uh, as well. As I mentioned, mobility is, is always an important topic in a general plan to think about how we get around the community. And, um, Oh, my first jargon word, multimodal, but that basically just means a lot of different ways of getting around, walking, biking, taking transit, um, wheelchairs, uh, other modes of transportation, how people interact with the physical environment. But I think importantly as well, autonomous vehicles. Um, this is gonna be a 25 year plan and autonomous vehicles very well may be cruising the streets of Santa Rosa during that time period. So thinking in advance, some of our mobility decisions around that. Community amenities and services. Um, this is another key thing that the city's heard through a lot of initial surveys and other feedback as well. 
relationships between law enforcement and neighborhoods, but also fire department response times and where those fire stations go and staffing levels. Uh, Santa Rosa has great park and open space, pretty good access for all neighborhoods, but there's additional opportunities as well of thinking about the type of amenities and services. And of course, education at all levels and how people access that um, and have exposure to it as well. Economic development, and I would say inclusive economic development, a uh, key focus as well, retaining businesses that are doing a good job and, and how you support those businesses, help them grow, especially local and minority owned businesses. And there's a lot of ways, you know, through policy, the city can be very supportive of that. Attracting, excuse me, attracting new businesses or new industries may be strategic, may make a lot of sense, help grow the local job force and job skills as well. Um, diversifying jobs, again, for the local community and uh, improving access to employment, all key issues of the general plan. So I mentioned that the Kaiser grant uh, was focused on healthy community policy. This was already a big focus of the city of Santa Rosa before the grant, but community health is really something that um, in the last decade plus, but especially the last few years, has really come front and center in planning, especially general plans. You know, how are we thinking about improving safety for everyone, creating more walkable neighborhoods, access to healthy foods, parks and recreation, increase access to healthcare. Um, anecdotally, around 20 years ago, uh, we worked on a general plan for the city of Richmond and they were 85,000 or so residents at that time and there was not one grocery store in the entire city limits at the time. Um, the general plan created policies to change that and to encourage grocery stores and access to healthy foods. Um, in 20 years, that has dramatically changed. So that's an example of really taking a focus at, at community health, but also equity and access to those facilities and services as well. Um, and it, Environmental justice and social equity is incredibly important. And the way the plan is structured, the types of policies in it, making sure that people of all races, cultures, genders, ethnicities, incomes, backgrounds, everyone's treated fairly in a respectful planning process, but also the outcomes of this process and how that the policies are developed as well. And supporting disadvantaged communities with resources, programs, and facilities they need. So again, this is uh, a, a lot of work to do over the next about two and a half years or so. I don't want to overwhelm anyone. Um, most of the work will be consultant and staff side, but we're looking to you to one, uh, help us better understand the community, but also get the word out, bring ideas in as well as we go through this. And one of the reasons why we have you know, this multiple phase process is we take a very big, important process and break it down into kind of bite-sized chunks. Um, so each one of the CAC meetings uh, is focused on one of these key milestones, either a document or point in the process. So we also want to use your time efficiently as well as we go through this. Um, and just something I want to highlight here at the end. So that's kind of the big overview um, as far as next steps or some immediate steps. We just put together what we're calling a briefing book. Um, but basically, we, as a, as a team of consultants and staff, have prepared, and it's available now, a very large compendium of existing conditions, sort of an inventory of facts, data, information, analysis. And this is called the Existing Conditions Report. It's very comprehensive, but we produced a summary of key findings or key takeaways. And then also this briefing book, which is about a 10 page, highly visual executive summary almost of existing Santa Rosa. So we're gonna ask CAC members to review really the briefing book and the key findings. Um, feel free to read the existing conditions report uh, if you want more detail and more information. But in particular, be thinking about the briefing book and key findings and some of these key takeaways. Uh, we're gonna have our next CAC meeting. We're really gonna talk in more detail about the existing conditions and sort of the existing city uh, character and structure and design in early March. We haven't confirmed the date yet, uh, but we should be able to confirm it this week. So stay tuned for an email 
from Andy and city staff about this next meeting. But the big thing or the big charge from today's session is help us get the word out. Um, great discussion today about all these connections everyone has on the CAC. And that's really where um, we need your help in the near term is getting the word out about the project. Um, and one of the key ways to do that, I'm gonna to try to do this through Zoom here, here we go. We have the project website up and running. And um, this was launched a few weeks ago, santarosaforward.com. This is gonna become sort of a one-stop repository of all information specifically about this project. So we can coalesce it in one place, but it's also very accessible for the community as well. Um, definitely encourage you to go on the website, get familiar with it. Uh, but a few key things, we are gonna have news blasts and people can sign up for emails, <clears throat> but we have a section about um, with information on documents that are publicly available. So the first one that literally came out in December, 2020, as I mentioned, is the existing uh, conditions report. Our detailed community involvement strategy is there as well. What may be very helpful as you uh, have discussions with folks in the community is our about the project page has a, a high level review of what is the general plan and our schedule, um, but we're also updating and adding these frequently asked questions. So who is the CAC? What do they do? Uh, does the general plan update address environmental justice? That kind of stuff. So we're trying again to get a lot of uh, access to ideas, information disseminated out there. We have a page dedicated to all of you. <laughs> so we're gonna keep updating this with meeting information uh, and other materials. And also important to this overall process and last thing uh, to mention as well, it's all translated into Spanish, um, which is very key as well. So as you're uh, reaching out to folks, if there's members of the community who are more comfortable or need to access information in Spanish, the website as well as all of our key engagement materials will be translated as well. Hey Dan, we have a question from Yvette. Yes, um, my question is in regards to the strategic plans that we have in the city. There's a couple different ones. Is that something that's gonna be addressed in the general plan or is that two separate um, things that, are those two separate um, um, reports? Uh, I'll start in like, in, like in regards yeah. to like the downtown specific plan and the Roseland specific plan are those a part of this general plan or is that something totally different? Uh, it's, uh, it's a really, really good question. So the specific plans for downtown Roseland, uh, technically they implement the general plan. So the general plan is sort of a higher level overarching policy document. Both of those have been recently updated um, and they are uh, in effect as adopted plans right now. As we go through the general plan process, ultimately the new general plan will be adopted. Um, probably won't have many changes to the specific plans, but there may be a few uh, that come out of the general plan, at which point they would be amended to be consistent with the general plan. So it's sort of a, a, a structural process, but the general plan and the policies in the general plan do um, need to be uh, shown consistently in specific plans. Steven. Uh, yes, Steven. Steven, Steven, would you like to ask your question? Oh, yes, thank you. Um, a clarification and then a question. Um, Help me understand uh, each of our roles. Is my understanding that each of us on this committee has a constituency, if you will, you know, a group of people or organizations that we're to reach out to, engage, explain the general plan concept, um, encourage them to give feedback, and then bring that back to the group? Is, is that generally? what our individual responsibilities are. Yes. And, and then in, in, in my case, it's the land use community 
So I will be reaching out to people who are interested in land use that might be low income housing advocates, uh, real estate developers, architects, property owners, people who are interested in, in land use. Um, what resources will each one of us have to be able to accomplish that? That is an excellent question. So through each one of, well, and there's several things. Um, one, we're gonna have a lot of engagement materials and notification materials and flyers, sort of like, you know, stuff that you can just send out or, uh, you know, point people to the website for information. But as we go through each one of the engagement um, modules, for lack of a better term, you know, the, the one coming up is gonna be on visioning. We're gonna have a lot of workshops, a lot of meetings, a lot of surveys. Each one of these key engagement parts of the project, we're also going to have materials prepared as well and information. So in a, in a sense, we're almost going to be giving everyone a packet of content um, and some survey questions and some information as well. So it, it will vary probably depending on where we are in the project. But one, it's trying to get people uh, aware of these opportunities for engagement but two, also helping them engage as well, either bringing them into uh, these workshops or surveys or actually um, doing, uh, a lot of times we do these sort of workshop toolkits. Um, so for instance, if, if some of the folks in the CAC work with homeowners associations that have meetings or other groups that have meetings, you can actually run a mini workshop and have the same sort of questions or feedback that you can br bring back to the group as well. Um, so there will be a lot of information at your disposal as we go through this process and each one of these big engagement events. So if, um, <clears throat> if, if I wanted to reach out to the Urban Land Institute or I wanted to reach out to brokers or homeowners associations or low income housing advocates to have them put together a group of folks where we could have a Zoom meeting to discuss issues and what's important to them uh, each one of us with their own constituency on this committee will, will have resources such as yourself and the city to help us make that a reality. Yeah, and I think it's going to be a, a bit of an iterative process as we go through this um, because the, the goal here is to cast a broad, as broad of a net as we can from an engagement standpoint. Um, there is also a tremendous value uh, especially around some of these big workshops, to have a lot of people in the community together hearing each other as well. Um, so it, it's a balance between let's have meetings with small groups, get their ideas in, but also hear it as a big group as well. And especially in our near-term uh, COVID world, the, the small groups are gonna be a little bit more important <laughs> because it's a, it's a better way to hear people more one-on-one, -on -one, like you just you know, described in some of these situations. So uh, if, if I'm going to reach out to, let's say the architectural community, get two or three prominent or uh, maybe a low income architect and a, an office architect or the same thing with developers, maybe a large developer, um, a moderate income housing developer, that type of thing together in different groups and try to moderate uh, a Zoom meeting with them to get their feedback. Is that generally kind of what my responsibilities would be on land use. Can I uh, uh, jump in for a second? Mm -hmm. I think what we're talking about um, for CAC members and their touch points to the community, they don't have to be formal to let's say a particular sector or, or let's say uh, a special interest group. We recognize many of you in your professional lives and, and your work in the community may have those already. And we heard a, a lot about those, but you should feel free to, to reach out. You're a free agent, you're, you're not bound. And, and the, the most important and the most beneficial thing that can happen is as CAC members, you're spreading the word. And if an opportunity comes up with a specific group, like uh, a group that's involved in land development that might have a focused discussion, I think we would very much welcome the opportunity to have that kind of conversation. 
but we're trying to structure uh, the CAC so that when we have these different milestones in the general plan project, we will have your voice come to the table, give us comments and feedback. And your voice may actually be an amalgamation of everything that you've learned, your colleagues in a, in a particular field. Um, so I think uh, Dan's point, this will be iterative. We'll, we're, we're learning. This is a, a very broad net that we're casting. And, and um, I think we'll just have to, to approach scenarios like you present uh, as they come up and see how best to accommodate them. And, and then who do we work through specifically? If I come up with a few ideas that uh, I'd like to have a discussion with three people, then who would I go to to help? You're, help you're, always, you're always welcome to approach me. I'm as project manager, I have to play the role of a, a traffic director. So it's always important for me to be aware of, of these sorts of communications. And I will get out of the way to make sure you get to the right resource. Um, and, and I don't know that we pointed it out, but we do have um, SR forward as an email that you can write and it'll get to the team and we'll be able to respond back to you and, and forward it on uh, your questions or your suggestions uh, to, to the team member, or it could even be a specific staff member in this city who uh, works in that specific area. Great, thanks Andy. Uh, thanks Dan for your guidance on that. That's, uh, it helped clarify things for me. Yeah, Thank that's you. great Great questions. Uh, Yvette. Yes, I just wanted to do a little clarification because in the past I've done um, some focus groups and listening sessions. And so is that something that you're expecting us, if we have an opportunity to do a focus group or a listening session to bring that kind of content to what we're doing? So let's say we have a group um, like what he talked about uh, general plans and, um, and some of that if we have a group that is capable of giving us feedback on a particular issue that we're focusing on in the general plan, so we can say, hey, we wanna do a focus group and we're gonna take down the information and bring that back to the CAC. Or if we wanted to have one of you come and say, and facilitate that, is that something that's available to us as well? Yeah, I, on, on the first part in particular, um, when there's already scheduled meetings, um, you know, focus group can be specific, but when I mention HOAs, like a lot of time HOAs have scheduled meetings. It's uh, usually a, a fantastic opportunity to then present uh, general plan ideas or topics or questionnaires as well, because we're going to the, the people, you know, they're already committed to a meeting that's already scheduled. We can find ways to support resources for all of you for those meetings. Um, and as Andy mentioned, you know, focus groups or specific discussions and pulling in staff or consultants, that's something, you know, that's definitely an iterative part of this. Um, Andy, again, will be the, the gatekeeper because we, we need to have a point person <laughs> organizing all of this as it comes in. But uh, this discussion right here is the perfect discussion at our first CAC. We want to get your ideas as well of, you know, how can we further this engagement effort? Um, so this is, this is great. And I think, uh, you know, we'll keep, keep thinking through ways that we can support, get these materials out uh, as these groups, these smaller groups start to form that you're all involved with. Yeah, I'm very encouraged by these comments because what I've seen now are, is kind of like these pop-up events that are happening that, that could, through your connections, you're gonna, you're gonna create an opportunity for us to maybe do a deep dive into a perspective and I think the challenge for us will be how to uh, structure that so those comments flow into, let's say, a, a specific project milestone. Our next one coming up is visioning, and and maybe you know that when we have a pop up group that might come up, let's focus next on visioning um, and kind of keep it in sequence that way. That would be helpful. Yep, that's a really good point. It is uh, helping the community work through this sequencing. So 
we have these different phases where we're moving through this process, but a really important way of thinking about it is each phase builds upon the last one. So as we move through this, we need to move through it as a community as well. And um, getting people engaged sooner rather than later is a, is, a, is a key part of it. Dan, just a quick thought and Andy, um, we had started early on, uh, which is a spreadsheet of different community groups and different outreach um, organizations. And um, because you know we're looking for a healthy redundancy with overlap. We don't wanna waste people's time, but at the same time, we wanna make sure we covered everybody. So um, to the extent that there are organizations that you wanna be sure are alerted to opportunities or to whom surveys are shared and so forth, um, maybe we could ask that people send those contact uh, leads to, I see Michelle starting to nod, maybe, I don't know, it would be Michelle or to whom that would be that we are collecting um, just, just the map of, of Santa Rosa organizations. Who would that person be? Well, that would be SR Forward uh, at srcity.com would, would be a great way for you to send, when you think of it, XYZ organization, mm -hmm. the contact information, a little description, and we can then pull it into our, our list, our database. Yeah, populate our community network mm -hmm. uh, database. Excellent. I, I, was, I was texted a very important point <laughs> that I wanna mention as well. When we started this meeting, uh, Michelle did a quick head count to do a quorum. So we are a Brown Act committee. Um, and what that means is for each one of these meetings, we're going to make sure we have a quorum. Uh, there'll be a formal opening by city staff and then we'll have our discussions. Uh, but what it also means is because we're a Brown Act committee, there's limitations on uh, committee members talking outside of these sessions. Um, because the, the idea of the Brown Act is we're discussing input ideas here in this public venue as well. So I did want to mention that. I don't know if anyone on staff wants to provide more detail to that as well, but going out with groups, with your own groups and connections and bringing information in is the goal. We just need to limit uh, CAC members, uh, like five or six of you having your own workshop with folks. We can't do that because we need to have that through the, the public venue. If I could just add, Dan, what the, the words that he should have added at the beginning were to each other. So be our ambassadors, but if you want to get information to your colleagues on this committee, run that through Andy as the project manager so he can handle that. Thank you, Charlie. And Charlie, again, uh, with PlaceWorks, the, the key consultant lead on the project as well. So I think it would be, this is to get uh, nuanced pretty quickly. Um, we probably should send out to the committee members guidance on communication so that um, you can refer to that because otherwise it's really easy to be tempt, you know, tempted to call a number of your committee members here and engage in the conversation. Um, so I, I think we, we uh, should send some sort of a, a one page guidance regarding Brown Act. Um, yes, please. <laughs> be a good follow up. Uh, Steven, you have a question. Yes, well, no, just to expand on that, uh, uh, I think that, that the one page Brown Act synopsis will be great because it, it fundamentally means that you can't get more than two city council members offsite talking about something that's coming before them or planning commissioners can't get together on their own and talk about something that's going to be on the agenda. And that means we, as individual members of this committee, more than two of us cannot get together and talk about it. Or if I talk to a, uh, another member of this committee about something and they talk to another member about it, we are now in violation of the Brown Act. So we need to be very careful to make sure that we're not talking to each other outside of the committee meeting. Ah. You said out loud what we all could hear, but we were all muted. <laughs> and that, yeah, yeah, it's called, that's okay. It's a serial meeting. You know, it's that game of telephone. It's, it's an, it, it doesn't serve people well in the long run. So we'll, we'll do it together. We'll all go out and then we'll all come back in and we'll equip you with 
what's, you know, worth sharing. And you'll equip us with the names of, you know, organizations that we can help push it out to. You're still unmuted, Annette, just to be careful what you say. <laughs> All right, well, that, uh, <laughs> any, other, any other questions from the CAC members? All right, well, this is a great first meeting. Um, I will pass it back to Andy and staff, though. I know we have a few members of the, uh, the public who are on the, the Zoom as well. Excellent, thank you, Dan, and that was a, great presentation and uh, you know uh, overview of the general plan but I think this highlight of the show is hearing from you it, it it made personally for me a tough day really great to hear your story so thank you it was really nice um, so I wanted um, Michelle who is running the the zoom meeting here behind the scenes make this uh, now time available for public comment so those of you, who have either called in or are participating by Zoom, if you would please raise your hand or I think it's press star nine if you're on the telephone and we'll recognize you in turn and you'll have three minutes to comment. I'm not seeing any hands raised. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and raise your hand now, if not, we will move on past public comment. All right, see, see you none. Michelle, I, can, I would ask a question in Spanish just in case there's someone um, who's a Spanish speaker. Excellent. Si hay alguien en el teléfono o en, o en la reunión de Zoom que tenga algún comentario público, les pedimos por favor que levanten la mano o que nos lo hagan saber. No hands. I think we are safe to move past public comment. Okay, I don't have the benefit of the agenda in front of me and I assume uh, it's now time to bring it for closing comment. Um, so really, I must thank you all uh, for attending this first meeting. I, I truly am excited to be at this moment. Behind the scenes for many months, we've been working to get to this point and to be here tonight and, and realize we have such a great group is, is a great, it portends great things for, for the project. As I mentioned at the start, you will be seeing things um, announced in the community and don't be surprised, join in. If when you see the survey released, please participate, tell your friends about it. Um, use use and, and distribute the, um, the uh, Santa Rosa forward email address you can search on that and you'll pretty quickly come to that site. That's going to be a really great place to catch information to learn more uh, as this project progresses. Um, and always you can reach out to us at SR Forward at City of SR, excuse me, SR Forward at srcity.com. That email will get to us. Or you can you can call us if you go on the email, excuse me, on the website, you can get our phone numbers. Um, so we, I think as Dan mentioned, we'll send out an email shortly with a date in March for our first substantive meeting. Tonight was a great over orientation and an introduction. Next time we'll really get the fight into some substantive planning, uh, general plan issues. So I look forward to that. Um, is there anyone else on the team here that wants to add to a closing comment, if, if not. Um, Andy? Mr. Yes. The email address is actually um, at srcity.org, not .com. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we and, posted on the, on the chat anyway, so if anyone wants to know what the, what the email is, it's on the, on the chat. Lee, did you have your hand up? You did. From Oh, you're muted. Yes, thank you. I did have my hand up, but the question was answered. It was about the .com versus .org. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
you can always email us directly as well. But that yeah. is uh, a joint account that we all check regularly. So with that, um, I will adjourn the meeting at 8.06. That's pretty darn close to our end time. And again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. And we look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, staff. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Thank you very much. Take good care. Thank you.